Welcome back to Switched to Linux. Well, today we have a re-release of an old Ubuntu flavor that has not been out for nine years. This is Ed Ubuntu, Ubuntu for the Classroom. So this distribution has made a comeback, mostly because of all of this proliferation of technology in the classroom. And this is actually being managed by the same team that does Ubuntu Studio. So if you are not familiar with Ubuntu Studio, again, this is a lightweight Ubuntu desktop. I believe it's based on LXQT, if I remember correctly. Don't quote me exactly. I think that's what it's based on now. And they've shifted it a little bit since I've used it, which is specifically designed to say, I'm going to be a creator for video or graphics or music, and it will have a suite of software specifically specific to them. Well, the same team put together an Ubuntu with the ability to come in and say, I have a preschooler, I have a primary schooler, I have a secondary schooler. And so you can add and remove the software suites and packages based on the age of the child. Now, this, because it's based on Ubuntu, does have some good application for the classroom. And we're going to go ahead and have a brief look today. First, I'll say there is not a lot of information online. It is officially on the Ubuntu flavors list. So, of course, if you hit the at Ubuntu.org site, it just right now redirects back to Ubuntu. So hopefully that will get redirected back to uh, the correct site as soon as it is done and we'll be able to get a little bit more information. So, uh, the, of course, the other new flavors that just come out, uh, Ubuntu Cinnamon. This is going to be the first release of this. Uh, last uh, last cycle, we saw Ubuntu, not Ubuntu Budgie, or, or was it Ubuntu Unity uh, down here at the bottom. There we go. Ubuntu Unity. That was uh, a fairly new one as well. Not new this cycle, but uh, definitely a, a new one. So you can see that uh, you do have some, some good options. I did have a difficult time finding the beta release for this. Uh, uh, but it is out there. I'm not going to link the beta release because it's so close to when the official Ubuntu's are going to drop. So you'll be able to find it more easily from there. Now, with that, what we're going to do from here is we are going to jump on over and have a look at the desktop itself. We're going to talk a little bit about what it works, how it works, and a lot of the different functionality from there. So let's head on over to the desktop itself. So I got our Ed Ubuntu installed here and our Ed Ubuntu is our administrator account and I added a student account here because part of this tool is how do the students see it as well. See we have a nice logo which is basically the Ubuntu logo with a little uh, little stem up here. Obviously it's an Ubuntu Apple so there you have it. We're going to log in as the admin first. So the basic administration of the entire Ed Ubuntu system is built around the administrative tools. The tools here not only allow you to add and remove software on the fly, which means that unlike Ubuntu Studio where you kind of set it up as you install, this makes it a lot easier to change. And they might actually have the tool in Ubuntu Studio. It's been a few years since I've looked at it. As far as what we're looking at here, it basically is simply Ubuntu with a bunch more software. 5 gigabyte download, so beware how you're transporting your ISOs on this one. I was not able to transport it on my typical hard drive. I used to transport things because of the file system, so I had to go back and make sure I was transporting it on something with EXT4 or NTFS or something like that to allow it to actually function correctly. Now, with that being said, what we're going to do here is let's go ahead and first start and look at those administrative tools because that really is where the educator is going to be at. So you can see you have your Ed Ubuntu info admin inside of your system. We have Ask Ubuntu, which basically is just the support forum. We can reset applications overview. And uh, the two that we want to look at here is the menu administration and the Ed Ubuntu installer. Looking at the menu administration first, this will allow you to hide certain applications for non-administrative users. No other thing you need to do, simply create a user, make sure they're not administrator, and everything with a checkbox will not show up. So I hit Ask Ubuntu. We do not have the ability to reset the desktop. We don't have the installer. We don't have the menu administrator. And it's doing things like system monitor, uh, the session properties, 
disk utilities, power stats, just the basics, some of the basics, background system administration things that the students do not need access to, you can turn off. You also can turn off other applications that you might want here, and anything that you are going to install should appear in this list for you to be able to manage. So that's nice and easy. Of course, anytime you hit apply, you're going to have to enter your password. Now, the second thing we have is the installer. This is the spot where it kind of gives us a little bit more information about the packages. So first, we're going to refresh the package information, and then it's building a package table. So somewhere in here, we have set up which applications work for which students. So you can see at Ubuntu Preschool, so the application bundle for preschool. Now, what it doesn't tell us here, this is a criticism. We'll get to more criticisms at the very end of the video, but just a brief criticism here. It doesn't really tell us exactly which applications are here until you actually click to modify something, and then um, it'll remove stuff, and it'll kind of say, hey, you want to remove all these packages? And there's no way to just say, yeah, remove this one, but keep that one. You don't have that real option there. Now, uh, we have the primary, secondary, tertiary, and we have the Edubuntu fonts. And the idea here is that some of the fonts are, are more uh, Comic Sans-y or, or things that are happier for, for some people to use. We're going to go ahead and hit Modified Selection just so you can kind of see what happens. So when you do this, you can see that what it's going to do is it's going to remove Blinken Compass, uh, Tux Paint, ULCC. So really it's like, okay, if I want to keep Tux Paint, but I don't want some of the other ones, eh, this really isn't uh, an option. I'm not going to go ahead and hit that. I'm just going to hit cancel and go back because we want to next have a look at all of the different applications that we have. You can change default setup, uh, change it to a setup for a different age group altogether. Uh, you can do that and then um, check or uncheck the things that you want to do. So that's really the administrative tool inside of here that helps out. Now let's go ahead and look at the software abilities. Of course, remember we're, we are here as an administrative, so we have all the administrative stuff on here as well. So looking at the basic tools, we have things for art, and it just gives us, uh, we have our Tux Paint, we have GIMP, we have Inkscape, we have, uh, there's a Tux Paint configurator, LibreCAD, and Drawing. We are not going to click in on all of these applications. Uh, maybe it might merit a different video for each one of these different things. Uh, here's some games. And these are all games that are kind of, they're not just games. They're really mind-challenging type games. Uh, we have uh, the Brainy here. So this is a variety of logic puzzle challenges, mental calculation, memory trainers, verbal analogies, things I don't know. I might want to install uh, <laughs> whatever else. We have Image Magic, Language and Learning has Calibri, ebook editor stuff, uh, Googly, Hangman, K Letters. So you can see it has a good mix of different tools for a lot of different functions, including some different games to hopefully encourage and challenge kids to learn a little bit. Mathematics. So we even have, uh, I think Camplot, I think is a graphing calculator. Um, I'm not familiar with that particular application, but we have uh, uh, calculator functions. We have uh, science things, which has like chem tool, chem drawing stuff. We have Stellarium. I did a whole video on Stellarium at one point in time. Calcium, Atomix. There's a number of different applications on here. I mean, where was this when literally get this when I was a college professor teaching chemistry, I was literally like, Hey, um, we need to get chem draw. Chem draw is like the official one. So we can, you know, build tests and things like that. My chemistry, my science budget actually did not see the need to spend a hundred dollars for me to buy chem draw out of my budget. I'm like, what in the world is wrong with you people? You're not going to give me software. Of course, this didn't exist back then. And I paid for chem draw out of my own pocket. And you better believe the guy was mad when I didn't leave the licensed copy with him. It's like, no, it's my copy. Buy your own or convince the school that you need it. <laughs> but here we can add our benzenes. Uh, we can add our, um, you know, our dimers, all these types of things. Yeah, I said that wrong. Um, so you can add a variety of different, uh, different things. Here's your sugars, heterocycles, amino acids. Here's your symbols. A lot of fun stuff uh, so that uh, you can go ahead and do that. We're going to, whoop, uh, yes, we're going to close chem tool. I don't need that. But it's kind of, kind of funny story. It's like <laughs> college does not see the need for the chemistry professor to have chem draw. 
<laughs> it was a sign that wasn't meant to be. Here's some geography. Uh, so this is nice here. Test yourself on your knowledge of the maps, the state capitals, things like that. So you can actually set up little tools. Uh, you know, capital of Olympia. Uh, Olympia is the capital of, you know. So you can go ahead and uh, do these and see what you, all of your, your answers uh, answers are and things like that. So there's some nice tools on there to uh, help out with the kids. So here's your basic technology, which includes your typing tutorials. I think some of these were a couple of games. I think at least one or two of these were games. And then we just have basic system utility things on there. Nothing else specific. So those are the tools and specific things that we get, of course, centered around the administrator. So now what we're going to do is we're going to log in briefly as a student. And when we log in here as a student, uh, we'll go ahead and see what the options all look like. So we're going to log out as our administrator, and we're going to go in as our student, enter our super secret password. It's not 123 or kid either, of course. So once we get logged in here, you'll see it's going to look basically the same. It's just as we get into our menus, all those options that we have excluded from the uh, from the tools are now missing. So people can't get in here and change administrators and settings. You can't see the drivers, software sources. You can still install software, so that's good. And you you know there's possibly an application for wanting to do that. So. Uh, that is certainly a good thing. But you can see that we do have a, a good computer that has a lot of different software on it. It's not some complete different distribution in that there's something core different about it. It literally is just Ubuntu with a whole lot of educational software with a couple extra tools to manage the system better for uh, parental use. So that happens to be a good system. Now, from here, uh, if you want to look into a good computer to put this on for your uh, family computer, you can have a look at today's sponsor. So Malleable Computers is good customized Linux laptops. They are high-end computers. They're going to start you down in the range of about $1,000 all the way up to just under $3,000 for the various things that you get. This is a very good deal. We have at the highest end, we have 16-inch Intel Core i7, a 1270H, 64 gigs of memory, NVIDIA GeForce RTX graphics, two terabytes of storage, and these will come with your option of different operating systems. If I remember correctly, you have the option of Linux Mint or Ubuntu. You also can get it without an operating system at all, so you can install whatever operating system you would like, or if you want, you can buy a Windows license and get it configured for Windows as well. So as far as if you want to go with the lower end, these are still really good computers. You have 14-inch Intel Core i5, 12500H, 8 gigs of memory, Intel Z graphics, 250 gigabytes of storage, and that is, I believe that is NVMe storage with a Linux operating system. So if you want to go ahead and customize one of these, you can mix and match a variety of different options. So you can upgrade it to an i7, which is going to cost you an extra $125 there. You can see you can upgrade your memory from 8 all the way up to 64, which is going to come with the extra 240 and uh, with this particular computer option, you only have the Intel Iris XE graphics. And uh, you do have the option for the NVIDIA with other computer builds. You can see uh, we have a Crucial M2 chip here. And then you have a variety of different options that you can choose from. And then here we have, uh, we have Ubuntu, we have Kubuntu, Vanilla OS, Linux Mint, or you can do the Windows. Of course, the Windows are going to cost you the extra licensing fee. So you can see that you have a few different options for there, or you can just select no operating system at all. They're just going to ship it to you with a blank system, and you can go ahead and do that. No interest if paid within uh, six months of purchases of a $99 or more, and you can set up your payments through PayPal. Have a look at Malleable Computers, tlm.li forward slash Malleable. That is M-A-L-I-B-A-L. 
Now let's talk briefly about the criticisms I have of the operating system. So as far as uh, I can see, the system itself is pretty good. It is based on Ubuntu, and some people are going to love that, and some people are going to hate that because Ubuntu does indeed get itself. Uh, some people really love it. Some people really hate it. There's reasons for the criticism. We're not going to leave it to that. As far as the criticisms outside of, of Ubuntu, there are a couple things that I notice, really only two big ones. The first is the desktop environment. This uses the GNOME desktop environment, and I did check it before we started here, and it was using about 1.2 uh, to 1.5 gigabytes of RAM. So if we're talking about the typical school computer, it's not going to be a beast. I don't think the GNOME is going to work so well, making this not the best desktop environment or, or distribution, rather, to install on a school-wide bank of computers, because you're not going to have supercomputers on here. If you're running your home-based computer and you can put up a decent computer, it's going to work fine. But as far as the type of schools, uh, computer schools are going to have inside of them, this is probably not going to be something you're going to deploy there. Home computer, it's going to work a little bit better. School computer, maybe not. They should have gone with something lighter like uh, LXDE or XFCE or LXQT. There are a number of different desktop environments that they could have used to save a little bit of, of memory there. The second factor I looked at that just made me scratch my head go, huh? There is no Zoom. Modern day education is very, very focused on telecommunicating. It's very focused on video conferencing, video conferencing education. If I want to install this for my kid to use and then patch in with the teacher for cyber learning, uh, home-based learning, homeschooling across the network, things like this, I'm going to have to have the extra software. Is it a problem? No. It's just curious to me that in 2023, we release a brand new version of a education-based system without any education teleconferencing software on it. Very weird, fairly minor criticism. Go ahead and install it. It's available as a snap. So, no big deal. So there is my final thoughts about Ed Ubuntu. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. Thank you for watching this video from Switched to Linux. This channel would not be possible without the backing of the program supporters scrolling on the screen now. You can be a supporter at Patreon at patreon.com slash T-O-M-M or at thinklifemedia.com. I also want to thank the open source community who creates such excellent software that makes producing this show possible. Please remember to support your software communities. Thank you, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.